But this is another major problem. I could go through hundreds of these examples. It's not limited to glyphosate. It's not limited to, to these PFAS chemicals. There, there are so many different chemicals like this where it's problematic because we look at them, we have our regulation, we have our policies around them completely backwards. You know, there was recently something that came out with, uh, I think, PFAs, perfluoroalkanes in, uh, in Tobo Chico, this mineral water. Consumer Reports did a, a piece on mineral waters and contamination, and uh, my beloved Tobo Chico got on the chopping block, and I haven't had any since, and I've been drinking, uh, you know, more pure mineral water since then, but all these processed waters had high levels of, some had arsenic. People can go to that Consumer Reports uh, article. I'll link it in the show notes. You can, a lot of these mineral waters that are in the stores, whether it's Starkey water at Whole Foods had high levels of arsenic, I believe. And yeah, these chemicals are, are everywhere. It's just, I, I, I don't know. It's a bleak picture for me. There's so many different types yeah. of chemicals. So I would just say on that front, one of the best things you can do for the environment and for your own health is not buy bottled water. And, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One on the environmental side, those bottles are, are plastic and they are uh, they're polluting the earth and we have these incredible problems with microplastics now. You can't find an, an area of the earth, including the deep ocean trenches without microplastics. It's coming sometimes, from all this plastic use. Sometimes you can get them in glass, but yeah. And glass is fine. You know, glass is inert, non-toxic and, and definitely preferable. If you care about your health um, and, you're, and you're going for, uh, for things like milk and um, other liquids that you want to buy a quality expensive product, get it in glass for sure. Uh, but also these plastics, they have, they have many toxic chemicals in them. Um, they have bisphenols in them, they have phthalates in them. Um, and they also, um, they a lot of these plasticizers, they come off and especially when they're heated. So people microwave their food in a plastic dish, they're getting toxic chemicals in their food. There's a lot of things you can do as a consumer to avoid your own consumption of these things. Uh, for example, when I had my kids, we used glass baby bottles instead of plastic baby bottles. Yeah, I was thinking of the bisphenol chemicals when you were mentioning that individual chemicals get pulled off the market, yet the class doesn't. Because even from my perspective as a consumer, it was pretty obvious that the BPA thing was kind of a bait and switch. People said, oh, BPA is xenoestrogenic. It stimulates breast cancer cells and cell culture. And we said, okay, the bisphenol A is going to be uh, you know, uh, a xenoestrogen, but what about BPE? <laughs> what about BPC? There are so many bisphenols that are used in our plastics now and they continue to be used in plastics. And we'll see this in plastics over and over, BPA free. Well, that just means that the next xenoestrogenic bisphenol is now in the, in the can lining, in the soda can lining. I don't drink anything out of cans because of this. I don't, I'm not gonna drink uh, LaCroix or a sparkling water in a can because it's lined with plastic that has other bisphenols and xenoestrogens. And I, I certainly try to a militant extent to avoid the plastic, but you know, you remind me that it's basically impossible whether I get, um, most of my listeners will know that I get meat from Belcampo, which is an organic regenerative farm in Northern California and white oak pastures in Georgia. But whenever they send me meat, they're sending it to me in plastic. And I haven't been able to convince them just to wrap it up in in um, parchment paper and just send it to me because it'll be a, a melted mess in a box. And how are they going to do that? So there's no good way to do this. I, I recently hunted and I wanted to ask you about this because I went hunting and I got a deer and I wanted to get your perspective on wild game by latitude. Um, my impression is that if I'm hunting it, not at an Arctic latitude, that the wild game will be cleaner. But what do you think about that? Yeah, so let me address that question. But before that, I just want to say that the bisphenol example you gave is really the poster child for this concept of regrettable replacements. Like bisphenol A was replaced with bisphenol S, and it looks like bisphenol S is probably at least, if not more toxic than bisphenol A. And there, there's other examples with the bisphenols like you mentioned. And so again, you look at this label, it says BPA free, you think, great, you know, problem solved. No, that problem is not solved. It's just a different problem for which we don't have the data yet or, or only the, the scientists in my field have the data, but it hasn't gotten to the regulatory level yet.